I'm going to show you how to set up and use the Blue Demon Blue Arc Genesis 200. Let's start off by looking at everything that comes in the box. There's the machine itself, a TIG torch, which has a flexible head on it, as well as a Superflex cable. You have a work clamp with its lead, a foot pedal for variable amperage control while you're welding, as well as a switch that can be attached to your TIG torch, a gas regulator, as well as a hose, an adapter for 110 volts, and a lead and electrode holder for shielded metal arc welding. Setting up this machine to TIG weld is pretty straightforward. Let me show you how to do it. First, I'll make the gas connection to my torch right here on the port in the front of the machine. Next, I'll connect the DINS connector to the negative terminal for my TIG torch and the foot pedal or trigger switch. On the positive side, I'll connect my work clamp. Now for the gas connection, I'll connect the hose right to this port on the rear of the machine. Then using the included fitting on the regulator, I can connect the other end of the hose and tighten those fittings before connecting it right onto your gas cylinder. To assemble the torch, I'll put the collet with the split side toward the front, followed by the collet body, which I can just thread all the way down in place. Over the top of that is my cup or my nozzle, which will direct gas flow that I tighten down. I've ground a point on my tungsten electrode and then I can slide it right down in place, leaving about a quarter inch protruding out and snug it down by tightening that back cap. Back over at the gas cylinder, I need to adjust my flow rate based on the cup size. It's usually just a little over the size of cup in liters per minute or about twice that in CFH. This is set up well for a number seven cup. Let's go ahead and take a look at the front panel on this machine. There are dedicated buttons for most of the main functions here on the machine. There are several other settings that are indicated by lights here. You can scroll through them with the buttons and then just turn the wheel to adjust it. For example, here I'm adjusting the post flow or how long argon will flow after I'm done welding. The pulse button serves a second purpose by pressing and holding for two seconds to activate remote foot control with a pedal. This is a very important setting to be aware of. Now I'll show you how to set the machine for DC TIG welding like you would do on steel or stainless steel. I'll start off by going to my mode button and it's set for high frequency arc starting on TIG. Polarity is set for DC and then over here my remote is not on. I want to use a foot pedal so I'm going to press and hold until it indicates that a pedal is activated. I'll set my welding current right here to 120 amps and then I can cycle through the remaining parameters and the only one that I'm going to change in this case is post flow which I'm going to set to 10 seconds to keep some argon flowing over my tungsten electrode and my weld after I finish a run. With the machine set like this I can weld just using my foot pedal to fine tune the amperage. Now I'll change the machine over to TIG weld with AC or alternating current. This is useful for welding aluminum and it switches the electrode on the torch between positive and negative over and over again. When you change to this mode, there are two additional settings that become enabled on the machine. One of them is AC frequency and that tells how many times per second the electrode switches between positive and negative. 120 Hz is a pretty good all around setting, though there's a lot of personal preference here. Typically a lower frequency is used for thicker materials and a higher frequency for thinner ones. The other setting that becomes enabled is AC balance. The electrode is not on positive and negative for the same amount of time and on this particular machine, the AC balance setting shows the percentage of time that it's electrode positive. 25 to 30 percent is a pretty good range for most things that you'll do. A higher number will give you a little bit more of a cleaning effect and a lower number will give you a little more penetration heat into the material. To actually set the machine, I'll change my polarity to AC with that button and make sure I'm still in the high frequency mode. I'll just check my other settings, making sure that the remote is still enabled and I'm still on 2T operation. Now when I cycle through, I have the same settings I did before. I'll just scroll through each of these settings until I get to AC frequency. Right here, I can set this to 120 cycles per second or 120 hertz. The next parameter is our AC balance. I'm just going to leave it at the default setting of 25, which works pretty well for most things. Once again, that means that the electrode is positive 25% of the time and negative 75% of the time. Now I'll switch over to mixed TIG, which is a unique feature that allows the machine to switch over and over back and forth between AC and DC when you're welding aluminum. 
Mixed mode has all of the settings that we talked about in AC, and I'm going to verify that my base settings are the same, the remote is active, and I'm still on 2T mode. As I scroll through here though, there are two additional settings, mix frequency, that's how many times per second it will change back and forth between AC and DC. I'll set it at one second so we can see what's going on. The mix ratio here is the percentage of time that is on DC versus AC. I'm gonna leave that at 50%. Now you can see as I weld here, it goes to AC and etches and you have that buzz, and then DC just drives additional heat and penetration down into the material. Now I'll show you how to set up the machine for shielded metal arc welding or stick welding. It's also known as manual metal arc welding, which is what the MMA over on the panel stands for. First I'll disconnect my torch electrically and also remove the gas fitting to get it out of the way. I'm going to move my work clamp from the positive terminal to the negative terminal for the most common polarity and then connect my electrode holder and lead over onto the positive terminal so I'll have DC electrode positive. Now on the panel here I'm going to change to manual metal arc welding, it's on DC but notice that the remote light is still active, so I'm not able to change the amperage on the panel. I need to press and hold for two seconds to change back to local control. With that in place, then I can rotate my setting, and I'm gonna set my amperage at 130 amps for a 1 8 inch 7018 electrode. As I scroll through the settings, I have arc force that can help fine tune my arc as well as a hot start setting to increase the amperage up front. I'm just gonna leave these at the default settings of 50%, which should be a fine starting place for most people. Now I've shown you all the basic features that you need to really get up and running with this machine. Next, I'll show you some advanced features that you might use later down the road, but these aren't essential up front. The first is going to be how to save and recall programs so that once you find some settings that work well for you, you can get them back right away. Once I have the machine set with settings I want to save, I'll press the memory button until the save light is highlighted and pick which of the 10 program numbers. I'll just use program zero, press and hold memory, and then it'll indicate that it was successfully saved. That's all, now I can go ahead and change some of my settings around so that it's in a different condition. Go to load there with the memory button, back to program zero, press and hold, and it will indicate that it successfully loaded the same settings that I had before. Now with these settings loaded, I should be able to weld just the same that I had in the past. Next I'll show you how to use the pulse settings on the machine. After I activate the pulse mode by pressing the button, I can scroll through and find three additional settings. The first one is going to be base amperage, which will be the percentage of the set current that the weller will run when it's not on peak. Pulse frequency is how many times per second it will switch between high and low amperage. I'm going to set this to 30 times per second. Duty cycle is the percentage of time that it's at its high amperage. I'll use 40% here. This 30-30-40 mix is pretty good. Notice how pulsing at this frequency is very similar to welding just with straight current, except a slightly more focused arc. The 30 hertz frequency can be bothersome for some operators, so I'll go ahead and turn it up to 100 hertz and we'll take a look at that. Once again, it's very similar, except the arc is just even more focused, and this can be very useful for thinner material or when you're welding near the edge of your material. There's one other way that you can use pulse, and I'm gonna turn the pulse frequency clear down to one pulse per second. Now in this case, we're not trying to tighten up the arc, but rather to time progression. So you can just add some filler on each high part of the pulse by running at a low frequency like that. Next, I'll show you how to use the sequencer, which rather than using my foot pedal to control amperage, I can use my foot pedal as a switch or the finger control switch to move through a program on the machine. And I'll show you how to set each of those blocks in a program like that. In order to use the sequencer, the 4T mode, I need to disable the remote control by pressing and holding the pulse button. Now it's back to local control and I can change to 4T mode. Here in 4T mode, I can move through each of these parameters in the sequence. I'll show you, start with preflow. That's how long gas will flow immediately after you press your pedal. After it flows for that long, it'll go to its initial current, which is a percentage of your set welding amperage. Now when you release the pedal, what happens is it will slope up over a number of seconds that you set here on upslope and then end up at your welding current and continue there until you press the pedal or the switch again. 
When you press it again, it will start to slope down over a number of seconds that you set as your down slope until it lands at the final amperage, which is a percentage of your set welding current. Once you release the pedal, the arc stops and then it flows argon for the number of seconds set on post flow. Now I'll show you how to use the spot timer, which will run a weld for a set period of time and then pause for a set period of time and then repeat that as long as the trigger or foot pedal is pressed. I need to make sure that my remote amperage control is off and then I can go into the spot mode. Here in the spot mode, I have two parameters, spot time, which is how long in seconds it will keep the welding arc on at the set amperage and dead time, which is how long it will be off before it turns on again. And that's how to set up and use the Blue Demon Blue Arc Genesis 200.